Welcome back to Tech by Pike. Today we are bringing to you the benchmarking results of the Alienware X15 R2 gaming laptop. We did an unboxing of this laptop a couple weeks ago and that video has been posted. And since then uh, we've been doing some synthetic benchmarking, benchmarking and some gaming on this laptop. Uh, we've checked out some features and we want to bring those results to you right now. But first, let's go over the specs of this particular laptop. It comes with a 12th gen i9 processor, an RTX 3070 Ti, comes with 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte SSD, and it comes with that 15.6 full HD 1080p 360 hertz screen. So we're very excited to have this laptop uh, here with us and had a chance to spend some time with it. We even like the lunar light color. So anyway, without any further ado, Let's get straight into the video. This is the 720p camera. Um, it's not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and type a little bit. And I've done this test a couple times, so I know that you can hear the keyboard. Not bad uh, for 720p. Um, and the mics are not too bad as well. Uh, I'd limit this to conferencing calls. The Alienware Laptop Control Center uh, is where you can make changes to how the game performs when playing AAA games. Um, it has an overclock feature. You can uh, change the speed of the fans, uh, power as well. If you go into the library here, you can do a scan of the games that you have installed on the actual machine and actually um, change the settings here as well based on each game because uh, they might be different for you. Under the FX here, you can change the backlighting of the keyboard, the alien head power button, and the alien head uh, backlighting on the top of the laptop lid. And you can also come over here to Fusion and monitor your CPU, your GPU, and your memory. The GPU has an advanced view here where you can do a little overclocking, memory and core clock, and power limit and thermal limits. So very nice features to have. The peak brightness of the laptop screen comes to about 380 to 400 nits. We did a test with our Spider X Pro and we came out at 100% of sRGB, 80% of Adobe RGB, and 83% of P3. We performed some synthetic benchmarking using Cinebench and we got a multi-core score of 15,877 and a single core score of 1,901. We performed some synthetic benchmarking using 3 d Mark. Um, we started out with a storage, a CPU, time spy, and then fire strike. Our time spy score here, we got a graph score of 10,096 and a CPU score of 12,494. Online score was 10,395. Let's move over to Fire Strike. Fire Strike score, graphics score was 25,996. Physics score was 27,357. Combined score was 10,467. With an online score of 22,785. We've got a CPU score, you can see from max threads, 7,282 all the way down to one thread, 1,068 with some monitoring scoring there. And then for our storage benchmark, we got a score of 2,254, and you can see some of the tests that it did through uh, loading Battlefield 5, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, and Overwatch. We leveraged Geekbench 5 for some more synthetic benchmarking, and uh, this is around our CPU. Our single core score uh, on Geekbench 5 was 1,852, and our multi-core score was 13,277. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here so we can get some more details on those single core scores. And you can slow this video down if you want to look at these in more detail. Here's the multi-core performance scores. All right. On an open CL score, we got 117,226. And I'm going to scroll down here so you can get more detail around that performance for open CL. There you go. 
So we played a number of our games to get some FPS averages uh, when the games are set to ultra and the laptop is set on high. And we played Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. We got an 85 FPS on average. Cyberpunk 2077, we got a 77 FPS on average. Star Wars Battlefront 2, which the score was a little surprising. We got 140 FPS on average, which is fantastic. A Plague's Tale Requiem, we got on average 63 FPS. And then our last one, we played Dying Light 2, and we got it on average 87 FPS on average. We're running Horizon Zero Dawn benchmarking. And we are checking out the temps of the laptop. And we're right around uh, 38.2 Celsius, right between the screen and the keyboard. We're going to put it on ultimate quality. We're going to run this benchmark. The palm rests, on the other hand, are around 23, 25 Celsius. But as you move up, Things get pretty warm right around the top of the keyboard and below the screen there. The fans get pretty loud when they're on high. We're doing some benchmarking on Horizon Zero Dawn. And we're getting between 57.8 decibels and 58 decibels. Some of our favorite games have in-game benchmarking tools like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, F1 2020, Red Dead Redemption, Horizon Zero Dawn. We ran those benchmarks and we got uh, a number of results going from max XPS at, to minimum XPS on ultra settings. Um, so the Shadow of the Tomb Raider um, max FPS score was 267 and then a minimum of 129. F1 2020 got a max of 273 FPS and a minimum of 191 FPS. Red Dead Redemption got a max of 111 FPS and minimum of 14 FPS. Horizon Zero Dawn got max of 98 FPS and a minimum of 38 FPS. And remember, this Alienware laptop has an i9-12900H and an RTX 3070 Ti GPU. So there you go. That is the Alienware X15 R2 gaming laptop. There's a lot that we liked about this laptop and a few things that were red flags. Uh, we'll talk about the good. The fact that it comes with plenty of I.O. Um, the lunar light color on this laptop is fantastic. We really like that. And if we open it up here, I'm going to show you something that I didn't mention. There we go. Is the RGB around the exhaust and the I.O. in the back. So uh, that's kind of cool. The keyboard was good. The trackpad was decent. We wish it was just a little bit bigger. We have a lot of palm rest here to expand that out. So uh, that is unfortunate. Um, the big thing that we didn't like about it, uh, the red flag in the room, is the memory is soldered to the motherboard on this particular laptop. There are 14-inch laptops out there, and I'm going to mention one, Asus, uh, that you can swap out at least one DIMM. And so I don't know exactly why Alienware at least doesn't give us one DIMM that we can swap out on this particular unit, um, but they didn't. They soldered it. So when you go out to the Best Buy website or an Alienware website, uh, you really have to think about future-proofing if this is a laptop you're looking at and um, buy accordingly. So there you go. Um, other than that, we got this laptop out there for, I don't know, Best Buy for around $2,700 without tax. And I know that there are other laptops out there that uh, are performed just as well, if not better, at a less expensive price. So anyway, uh, keep that in mind as well. This thing is thin. It's not so much light. I, it feels like any other laptop, 15 inch, uh, that you can go out and buy. I just think that um, if they really wanted to make it lighter, uh, maybe they could have configured the back end a little bit better. But that's okay, because I really like the I.O. in the back uh, for better cable management. I don't know. There's some kind of configuration that they probably could have worked out. 
Anyway, there you go. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this from Tech by Pike, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We appreciate it. it helps the channel. Not only that, it gives us an opportunity to bring more videos like this to you. And for that, we thank you. We'll see you in the next one.